In this lecture, we will discuss the commonly used two terminal elements in electronics. This is a topic under circuits and electronic devices. We will discuss the following topics for this lecture. Resistors and batteries are some of the most commonly used lump elements in electronics. These are primitive elements of electronic circuits. The element has its terminal that serve as the access point in our study of electronics, usually for the current. Paired terminals are called port, as shown in the figure. This is the port. And there are also electronic elements that have three or more terminals or ports. An electronic device requires a source of energy, and usually it is from an internal chemical reaction in our batteries. Uh, this is the symbol for a battery and this is the actual battery, let's say, uh, with a value of the usual 1.5 volts. In a battery, it is important to know its nominal voltage, the total store of energy, and its internal resistance. If you are going to measure the voltage across its terminal, maybe oh, we can connect this one with a voltmeter, the measurement is related to the chemical reaction that releases the energy. If you want a larger voltage, uh, what we can do is we connect a series of several cells as shown here. So the positive terminal of one of the cells is connected to the negative terminal of the second cell. Multiple cell batteries are commonly represented by the symbol at the right as shown here we're in the positive part of this terminal or of this cell is, is here and the negative part is located uh, below the constraint for cells in series is that the nominal current uh, capacity is nearly the same for all the cells let's talk about the batteries uh, this is the usual expression for the power delivered by the battery, which is just a product of the voltage and the current, the current uh, flowing out of the positive terminal of the battery. And we usually use the unit of watts for power. Power is just a rate of delivery of energy. Uh, if we know the time integral of the power, we can get the total amount of energy W as shown here. And the usual uh, units for this are the following. So first we have the joule, we have uh, ampere, ampere hours, then we also have watt hours. Very simple. Resistors have many varieties. In this picture, uh, it is a carbon resistor, carbon resistor, uh, which is one of the most common types of electronics use. Over a range of voltage and current, it follows the ohms law shown here. So V is equal to IR. We're in RV here is the voltage across the terminal of our resistor. So this is let's say this is terminal A. This is, we have terminal B. Then I is the current flowing through the resistor, and R is your constant of proportionality. So the relationship of V and I here is linear. Resistance also depends on its geometry. Let us have this cylindrical wire-shaped resistor shown below this picture. So this is our example. A conducting wire with cross-sectional area of A uh, of length L, the length of our resistor. Then we have the resistivity rho, which is innate to this material. Uh, we said before that we can express your resistor as the ratio of your V over I. But uh, in terms of geometry, you can also express your R as this expression for your resistivity, uh, length, and area. For a cuboid shape resistor, the area can be expressed in terms of the width and the height, shown here. Resistors need not be linear. They can be non-linear. Resistors has an algebraic relation between its instantaneous terminal current and its instantaneous terminal voltage. So for a linear resistor, we can express that one as the following. Your voltage is equal to I times R. All these uh, factors are time or 
has a dependence on time, so that's their independent variable. Then we have uh, a linear time invariant resistor shown here. The resistor here does not have any relationship with time. And last, uh, we have this third one, which is a non-linear resistor. As you can see, uh, the our current here has an exponent of 3. Let us now go to the associated variables convention. Uh, this is a, a convention that nearly defines the current flowing in at a device terminal assigned to be positive in voltage. So what do we mean by that? Let's say we have this resistor here, R. Then we have defined this current I here. The positive part of the voltage across this resistor is placed here while the negative part of your voltage is placed at this point. Now, if your current flows from the positive terminal going to the, neg to the negative terminal, we can say that this current is positive. However, if we have defined the current flowing on the other way, shown here, so from the negative terminal going to the positive terminal, we say that your current is negative. When the voltage and current for an element are defined under this associated variables convention, the power uh, into the element is positive when both V and I are positive. For this case, if your I is positive at the same time your voltage here is positive, we can say that the power is positive or it is being absorbed. While for the terminal variables V and I, for uh, for a two-terminal element under the associated variable convention, two terminals form a single port, as shown here. So we have a port here, and uh, the current I entering the element is the same as the current that exceeds the terminal as shown here. Voltage V of the element is defined across our port, which is this V here. Still, uh, with the associated variable convention, we can define the following. First, the instantaneous power P supplied into an element defined in watts. Second, uh, we have the amount of energy supplied to an element during a time interval T1 and T2, which is given in terms of joules. The third is the an expression of your power in terms of your current I and your resistor R. So this is for resistor. Then the fourth uh, relationship or expression for power is the power uh, power in terms of your V, the voltage across a resistor over the value of your resistor. An ideal voltage source is a device that maintains a constant voltage V at its terminal regardless of the amount of the current drawn from it. It is denoted by just a simple circle with the polarity written into it. Then, yeah, so we have this V as your ideal voltage source. It can be independent source, which means that it is independent of the rest of the circuit, such as power supplies, signal generator, or microphones. We can also have dependent dependent uh, voltage source and for this case uh, we can write this one on a circuit diagram as a diamond shape as shown with the polarity inside so it means that the voltage value depends on the voltage or current elsewhere in the network so it can your voltage value here can be defined let's say as v as uh, or V is equal to A, a certain constant times Vx, certain voltage uh, in your network, or it can be defined as uh, some constant V times Ix, where this Ix is a current somewhere in your network. For an ideal voltage source, it appears as a vertical line in our Vi curve. So it means that it delivers a constant voltage for different values of your current. On the other hand, for an ideal current source, it appears as a horizontal line 
along our VI curve which means that it maintains a constant current I at some uh, values of voltage V across its terminal. It can be drawn on your circuit diagram as a circle with the arrow that points to the direction of your current. So this is an independent uh, ideal current source but we can also have uh, a dependent current source drawn with this diamond shape here and it can be controlled by a voltage so it has a dependence on a certain voltage let's say vx in your network or with with this certain constant b or it can also be controlled by a current so let's say some constant a times ix so this is a current controlled current source so this is a voltage controlled current source so an ideal conductor or an ideal wire uh, has zero resistance and it can be drawn at just as a straight line and any amount of current flowing uh, without any loss of voltage or power so the symbol is just a line uh, and for this ideal wire uh, the terminal variables of VI so the, the the current and the voltage can be shown in this VI graph here so the the VI relation is just a straight graph as shown here so which means that it does not have any value of voltage uh, for, for for this ideal wire uh, but we have a constant current I, which is the, the I that flows in this uh, ideal wire. On the other hand, an open circuit element with terminal variables uh, can be also uh, expressed uh, in our VI curve. This time, it's the opposite. So, we have this graph, the yellow one. So, we have it, different values of voltage for a zero current. For an ideal linear resistor, so it obeys the Ohm's law for all values of voltage and current. We can also express the reciprocal resistance, which is the conductance G. So it's, it's this is the expression for the conductance with uh, units of Siemens S. Or, so thus uh, we can express your current I, which is equal to G, your conductance, times the V. So in this video, uh, we have described the battery and a linear resistor. We have defined a positive voltage through the associated variable convention. Last, we have discussed ideal two terminal elements, such as your uh, sources, voltage and current sources, ideal wire, and an ideal linear resistance. That's it. So thank you for watching.